NBA lockout isn't good for anyone. As fans, we don't get to see any games, team owners suffer financial losses since there are no ticket sales, and even players themselves. It's harder to stay in shape and in some cases it can even help to ruin your career. Hello everyone, I'm Purple Prince and I want to tell you about Vin Baker, a man whose career was ruined by the NBA lockout. Vin Baker was selected in the 1993 NBA Draft with the 8th pick by the Milwaukee Bucks. The 6'11 power forward played for Hartford College and his scoring prowess was enough to catch an eye of some NBA teams. Already in his rookie season, Vin Baker was a prominent part of the Milwaukee Bucks squad. Playing 31.2 minutes per game, Baker averaged 13.5 points and 7.6 rebounds. In his second year, Baker already played 41 minutes per game was the team's starting power forward, which was his natural position, and averaged 17.7 points and 10.3 rebounds. In total, Baker would spend his first four years as a pro in Milwaukee, averaging 18.3 points and 9.5 rebounds per game. Pretty good. But behind the scenes, Vin Baker was a problematic 25-year-old. Just nobody knew how serious it was. His problems with alcohol started early in his career. The first time Vin Baker played high was on January 5, 1996. He openly has talked about it. Went to the game feeling kind of disoriented. It was the anxiety of, am I going to be walking on air? Am I going to pass out? And what he got was his best game as a pro, scoring 41 points. Statistically, it was my best game ever as a pro. I scored 41 points. It was a weird coming out party for me. Because in some ways it said, whoa, I've arrived on this level to score 40 points, which is a big deal in the NBA. But at the same time, the cost of arriving, I didn't see that night. This night in a way gave Vin Baker the green light to continue his lifestyle. His problems still weren't a big deal, at least for him. His on-court performance was very good, but then, after four years in Milwaukee, Baker was traded to the Seattle Supersonics. In Seattle, Vin Baker was continuing to average around 20 points per game in his first year there, but Baker's drinking problem got worse. Already in his first season with the Supersonics, Vin Baker was regularly drinking before, after and sometimes even during games. The teammates noticed that and management knew about that, it's just that everyone in the management saw only his upside. And then came the NBA lockout, which lasted till the January 20th, 1999. Vin Baker didn't use this time to polish his game, instead he was drinking even more. When the NBA season started, Vin Baker reported to training camp 20 pounds overweight. He also had some injuries, and in total he played 34 out of 50 possible games, averaging career low numbers of 13.8 points and 6.2 rebounds. After the lockout season, Vin Baker's weight ballooned to 300 pounds. But instead of acknowledging the problems Vin Baker had, Seattle's management signed him to a new 7-year deal worth $86 million. That was a bad investment. Baker's weight issues impacted his on-court production mightily, and his drinking issues were as bad as they've been. Three years after signing extension, Vin Baker was traded to Boston Celtics. After undergoing a physical exam, the doctor employed by the Celtics found signs of liver damage, which was directly from his use of alcohol. His time in Boston was short, just 89 games, filled with alcohol and hungover. The Celtics didn't need a player which once was a surefire double-double threat. His stint with Boston ended after then-Celtics coach Jim O'Brien smelled alcohol on him in practice and confronted him. Celtics suspended him and later released him. New York Knicks wanted to take a chance on him. 41 games for the team and then a trade to Houston. Houston had him for three games and then released him. Los Angeles Clippers took a chance on him and had him for eight games. Release. Baker even signed with the Timberwolves but never played for them. Every team understood now that Vin Baker's NBA career is done. His once promising upside was non-existent. In fact, there was only negativity and issues. Vin Baker's NBA career ended with 791 games played, 15 points and 7.4 rebounds per game. 
In 2006, when his NBA chances ran out, Baker's issues got so bad he was drinking Listerine, Xanax, Librium, and other stuff to help him forget what he could have been. In 2007, Baker got arrested, and in 2008, he had to sell his house for $2.5 million. In total, it is reported that Vin Baker has lost more than $100 million due to financial troubles. Fortunately, he has gotten his life back on the right track. He has been sober for almost 8 years now, and is still very close to basketball serving as an assistant coach for the Milwaukee Bucks. He won't get back the $100 million. He will never be able to fulfill his potential as a player. But it's great to see that Vin Baker's life is in a great place. Thank you very much for watching guys. How good could Vin Baker have been if not for the alcohol problems? Do you think Vin Baker's career as a player would have been better off if there was no NBA lockout? Whatever your thought is, please leave a comment below. Also, don't forget to like this video, share it to your friends and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and enable bell notifications to not miss any upcoming content. This is Purple Prince, and I'm out. Now, I can't believe what I see Bunch of people brainwashing, they're thinking they free We need the best clothes that our money can buy Just so we can post a picture on the gram like yeah Like what the fuck is the matter? Man, that logic is wrong We've been focused on this dumb shit for way too long So we missed the real picture when we glued to our phone It's like the system wants to make a generation of clones So, we can all stay within their lines In reality, they trying to control our minds Make us feel like we need a pair of Calvin Klein's